Hey, Buns. Well, it feels really good to be able to say that again after what feels like a lifetime. In case you weren't already aware, I have been living in Ukraine for eight years. That's where my house is, hopefully still is. Um, that is where Zeppel HQ was created. And um, since the last video, my life has completely changed because of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So I went into a lot of detail explaining what it was like for me to flee the country. And that whole, all of that is on the second channel, Zep Live, because I talked about those things during the stream. So while I have been fleeing the war in Ukraine, I had been trying to squeeze in some streams here and there where I could while on the road. And during that, some of those streams, I did um, talk about my experiences of what it was like. So I, I kind of don't want to go into the whole emotional ordeal again, like reliving and re-explaining uh, how that was to flee. But that video, um, I will link to in the description box where I talk about how it was, how what it was like to get out um, whenever there was bombs falling in Kiev and I could hear air raid sirens and it was just, it, it's been the worst time of my life. <laughs> like, as you can probably imagine, this has been the most horrific, heartbreaking, awful ordeal I've ever been through. And, um, I don't know. Okay. Well, let's just, before I get off track, Right now I am safe. <laughs> That's what I want you to know. Uh, right now I am safe. I am right now I'm in Portugal. I was offered some housing here, um, like extremely low rent, like a symbolic price really for the rent in light of my situation. I'm here in Portugal on the southern coast. Uh, I'll be here until the end of May. That was the original arrangement. Originally, I thought I'd be able to come here uh, for a couple of months and then probably by the end of May, we'd be able to go back to Ukraine but that is not looking to be likely. That is not looking like a thing that can realistically happen in the foreseeable future, especially where my house slash studio is. Uh, my, it's in north, it's like a little bit northwest of Kiev and a little suburb of Kiev that is experiencing extremely, extremely heavy fighting and has been a hot spot for fighting. Um, it's one of the worst spots that you could be in in the country. Uh, so we are not hopeful that the house is still there. We're not hopeful that it hasn't been looted. It's very likely that it has at the very least been looted, which um, it's really nothing I can do about that. And I've been trying to just not uh, brood on it too much. I've honestly just tried to distract myself every time I start thinking about everything that I've lost. And um, now I'm planning, I'm just trying to look to the future and ask myself, where can I go from here? But I want you to know that the one thing that is going to happen is that I will continue to be making content for this channel. I will continue making the Volvo version content. I will continue streaming and uh, nothing is going to stop me from doing that. I've had this interruption of course, um, while well, I've been trying to get myself to safety, but um, my main priority is getting back to work and getting back to doing the things that I really find joy in, which is making videos and talking to you and playing Final Fantasy fourteen. So, um, my, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I might have to go to U.S. after this, go back to U.S. But it's just been it's been so overwhelming and it's been so devastating and heartbreaking that it's been hard to make plans. Um, this is the first week. So I just got to Portugal and this is like the first week where things started to feel like there, things are a little bit normal again. So I was able to stream and like not only just sit there and cry and talk about <laughs> the situation, but uh, actually play some games and like have fun and laugh. And uh, so this week has been like a, a finally some rest and some reprieve from the hell that I've been going through uh, for the past several weeks. I want to really thank some of you who have been stepping up to help support me financially during this time um, on Patreon and on Twitch, especially the reason for that is because I am currently completely unable to access my Ukrainian bank account. 
Uh, whenever I came across the border and I went to Poland, we tried to get some gas. It flagged the card for suspicious activity. Like it was like automatically flagged by some kind of bot in the system. And um, I tried to call and get it fixed. And uh, long story short, the bank has told me that they cannot verify my identity remotely. And they actually told me to go back to Ukraine and talk to a branch in Ukraine, which is obviously insane thing to ask me to do. And I'm like, you know, that's ridiculous. You know, that's not reasonable to ask me to do that. And um, they were like, oh, well, maybe just write later, like right back in a couple of weeks. So hopefully this is something I will be able to get resolved in the next few weeks. Maybe I just got a representative who didn't know what they were talking about, because that seems like an insane thing to ask me to do. But um, in any case, the situation is like that bank account, that's where all my YouTube money has been. That's where all of it goes. So I'm not able to actually receive any money from YouTube <laughs> right now. Um, uh, to, for me to set up a new place where I could receive like future funds from YouTube, I need to have an address where they can mail me a letter and I can like verify that this is my address. So that way they can start to send me to a new country. So basically, um, YouTube is very difficult for me to get money from right now. And that's why I really want to thank those of you who have been uh, supporting the channel on Twitch or on Patreon or, uh, even just watching ads on Twitch <laughs> or, um, Honestly, even just offering your uh, emotional support and your kindness and your kind words. I've had so many of you reach out to me and um, offer me a place to stay in your house. You've offered, some of you have offered your own homes to me. You've offered up your own rooms and your own houses to me. And uh, I was honestly get kind of emotional thinking about that because it really... When I heard a lot of those messages from y'all, oh my God, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's when I really started to feel like this is a family that we have here. Like this community really is a family. And I can't thank you enough for that, that kindness. Uh, it, I never felt alone throughout this. I have not felt alone and I've not felt like I was without friends. I've not felt like I was without a safety net. And that's because of you. So thank you so, so much for that. It really matters to me. Uh, I made a thread on Twitter where I suggested some different Ukrainian charities that you can support. Uh, in the future, I'm going to be doing like a big charity event stream. Uh, I'm going to let people, like, we're going to organize a lot of fun stuff for it and I will uh, let you know about it well in advance. But right now, I just kind of needed some time to <laughs> relax and um, get back to some kind of feeling of normalcy here. So yeah, it's just been, it's been a whirlwind. It's I've had to repurchase so many things. Like we basically, um, anytime we get a free moment, uh, I've just been going out to like buy clothes, <laughs> buy warmer clothes, buy new shoes. Anyway, like I said, I try not to dwell too much on everything that I need to replace and everything that's lost. Uh, I try not to. And just remind myself that, you know, things can be replaced, but lives cannot. And I'm incredibly grateful to be safe. And most of my loved ones are safe. Unfortunately, not everybody. There's some couple of friends I have who were just chose not to leave. They, they could not leave for various reasons, um, complicated reasons. So, yeah, it's just try not to fall into despair about it. And I actually had... Uh, a representative from Square Enix contact me and say that they wanted to help me. Uh, they wanted to send me some merch <laughs> that I had lost because that was one of the things that was really very stupidly upset about is like my collection of beautiful FXP <laughs> merch. If you remember my other my previous videos, like there was a shelf and it had like my all the plushies and statues, like all this like, collection of things. And uh, they said maybe they could help replace some of that for me. I thought that was really, really kind uh, for Square Enix to offer that. Now, in terms of just my mental state and trying to not fall into despair, I mean, if you hear me say that and you've played in Walker, it might even already sound familiar to you. And I think that Maybe it's just because I played and Walker so recently, because it hit me so hard, because I'm really obsessed with Fallout 14. It doesn't doesn't really matter to me. This was a piece of art. This story that it resonated really, really strongly with me at the time, 
And maybe just this happened to be something that I have emotionally been recalling as a comfort mechanism to help myself get through this time. And it has actually been really helpful. Um, it's not been something I've been doing even voluntarily, but throughout this horrible situation from time to time like I remember I remember some of the quotes and like some of the messages from Ann Walker that really helped me get through a lot of this stuff I mean it helped me like emotionally reorient myself and remind myself how I should face the situation at hand how I can survive and get through this I had on Twitter, I've actually posted a few different and Walker quotes. So I think that people had kind of guessed that like the game, like these messages had given me a lot of comfort and some like strength during this time. And uh, like, so I remember one thing that kept, kept popping into my head was the quote about uh, darkness and light, despair and hope. As goeth one, so goeth the other. Become light, become hope. And it's just such a it's just a simple, simple thing. I've tried to really take that to heart. And I've tried to really be that. It's like, because for me, it's throughout this, it often felt like there was two paths that I could choose. I can either completely descend into despair or I can just fully commit to having hope and being optimistic and trying to just walk that other path, like take that next step forward. And I like, I remember being on the phone with a friend whenever uh, the attack started, my friend was asking me like, what are you doing? Are you okay? Are you going to get out? What is happening? And I'm just like, I will get through this. I'll survive. I will survive. I'm going to get out of this and I'm going to get my friends out of this too. And that's sort of the way, that's the only way to move forward in a situation like this that, that feels so apocalyptic. Um, another thing that's been popping in my head a lot lately, actually, is now that I'm rested, you know, and I'm thinking back to everything that was before, I'm thinking back to the way things were. And I made tweets about this too, you know, just remembering my old life, remembering my house that I loved so much. Um, that, you know, I barely got any time in um, walking through the woods with my dog and like cooking in my kitchen and like sleeping in my bed and like decorating my little studio. Like I'm thinking back to all of those things and uh, getting more and more and more sad. And whenever that's been happening, I have, you know, been hearing um, or remembering this part where Vinat says, uh, so let there be no way back from that temptation I sunder us, you know, like I've been reminding myself, there is no way back. There, the only way forward is to just go forward, to take the next step forward, however you can. And, uh, that has been really oddly comforting to me. It has helped me so much. I think probably anybody would experience something like that if they just had like a book or something they were really obsessed with, like maybe they would find some things in it that were inspiring for them that helped them through. But for me, uh, you know, I'm, Final Fantasy XIV is kind of my life. And so I guess it was natural for uh, me to recall a lot of the things from this story that really uh, were quite relevant. Like a lot of the things were just very relevant to what I've been going through. So I, I know I've been rambling about that for a really long time. I didn't really know how to talk about it because um, it's so dumb and it's so cheesy because it's a video game, like I get it. But the messages in it meant a lot to me. And um, I guess that's really all I have to say about that. So I just kind of wanted to make this video as a sort of transition <laughs> between, you know, what happened before and hopefully uh, my next videos can just be about Molly's 14 and we can just get back to, uh, you know, in, in trying to enjoy ourselves as much as we can, try to squeeze some kind of joy and happiness out of life when all of the, everything else seems to be crumbling around us. That's what games have always offered to me. And I'm really looking forward to just getting back to, uh, you know, thinking about bunny, bunny boys and like, 
this is the things that comfort me and make me happy. So uh, we're going to get back to that as soon as possible. But I really wanted to just sit down and talk to you about what the last few weeks have been like. Because um, it's been extremely bad. It's been extremely bad. Well, Buns, I think that's all for today. I think I've said pretty much everything that I wanted to say. Again, I will direct you to the second channel, Zep Live. There are a lot of other um, update videos from the streams that were posted on there. So uh, if you'd like to hear more about my story of what it was like, that's all going to be linked in the description box down below. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, Buns. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.